Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aparna from Anurag Group of Institutions, CVSR College of Engineering. Have you ever been to a magic show? Have you ever seen a magician perform on stage? If yes, how was the experience? It must have been great when you see magicians performing tricks in front of you. What is magic? Magic is derived from the Latin word magicus. Magic manipulates reality with the help of occult power, something which is not understood by science. Magic has been there for centuries and we have always been intrigued by the mysteries of magic. There have been many magic shows on television also. I am sure you must have seen these shows on TV. There was a famous show where the magician told everybody what lies behind his magic, what is the secret of his magic. He opens his magic to everybody and all of us to see. And then we realized, oh, how simple and how easy it is to really perform magic. India has been blessed with famous magicians. We are very fortunate to have the best magicians in the world. The most famous of them are P.C. Sorkar Sr. and P.C. Sorkar Jr., both of them from West Bengal. P.C. Sorkar Jr. in the year 2000 vanished the Taj Mahal for two minutes. Now that is surprising. And then he also vanished the Victoria Memorial when Calcutta was celebrating its 300th year. How can anybody just vanish things like that into thin air? And that is exactly what he did. There people were standing and looking at the Taj Mahal and for two minutes it was not visible to them. There was an empty horizon in front of them. And the same was the case with Victoria Memorial. People were awed, they were surprised, they were bewildered. How can anybody perform a trick like that? Now tell me, what kind of clothes do magicians wear? Yes, they wear black coats, black pant, a bow tie, dress that has big, big, large pockets wherein they can hide things, is it not? Every magician wears a black dress which has big pockets and he also hides things up his sleeves. The lesson that we are going to read is something about that and I am sure you are going to really enjoy that. Have you heard of the famous Indian rope trick? At the simplest level, the rope trick is very easy. What does a magician do? He simply throws a rope into the air. It doesn't fall back down. It stands erect as if it were a pole. And he asks his jamura, that is his assistant, to climb up the rope and descend back. That is exactly what he does. People are amazed. That is a famous Indian rope trick. India is famous for it. Of course, there have been many versions of that rope trick. As the years went by, it became more and more complicated. And more recently, I am sure you must have all read the Harry Potter books written by J.K. Rowling, which were also made into movies. In that particular series, Harry Potter goes to the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, where he learns magic. And he learns to perform a lot of tricks. And he eventually meets his arch enemy, Lord Voldemort, and defeats him and finally kills him. This particular series has generated a lot of interest among youngsters in the recent times. As I was telling, who is a conjurer? The lesson is about a conjurer, a conjurer's revenge. Who is a conjurer? A conjurer is a magician, a person who conjures things with his tricks. This lesson was written by Stephen Leacock. Let us now learn a little more about Stephen Leacock. Stephen Leacock Butler was born on 30th December 1869. He was a political scientist, a teacher and he was also a humorous writer. In the early part of the 19th century, he earned a name as a famous humorist, perhaps the only one in the English speaking world. To supplement his regular income, Stephen Leacock started writing fiction, short reports, his stories were published in magazines in America as well as Canada. He became extremely popular around the world. Stephen Leacock wrote a lot of non-fiction, but he became famous for his humorous works. 
His first collection of humorous stories appeared in the year 1910 under the title Literary Lapses. His two important books are The Sunshine Sketches of a Little Town and The Arcadian Adventures of the Idle Rich. Stephen Leacock Medal of Honor was constituted in the year 1947. His home at Brewery Bay was opened to the public where people came and saw how the great man lived. And in the year 1968, his home was declared as a national monument. Now, let us learn about this lesson. What Stephen Leacock has to talk about magicians and what the conjurer did and how he took his revenge. The story starts with the conjurer or the magician performing his tricks on the stage. There is a whole lot of audience sitting right in front of him and he is trying to impress his audience. He says, the first thing I'm going to do is to conjure a bowl of gold fish from an empty cloth. And he takes an empty cloth and from that empty cloth, he brings out a bowl which is full of gold fish. Everybody is amazed, stupefied and in wonder. How did he manage to do that? How did he manage to do that? But then right in the front row in the audience is a man who is quick to give his comments. Stephen Leacock calls that man the quick man because, as I said, he is very quick in commenting on what the conjurer was doing. The moment he conjures a bowl of goldfish, this man whispers to the audience around and he says, he had the bowl of goldfish up his sleeve. Now, everybody looks at him and they start wondering, did this man really have a bowl of goldfish up his sleeve? The conjurer is a little perturbed and then he says, Now ladies and gentlemen, I am going to perform the famous Hindustani trick. Do you see these rings? Now I am going to join these rings together with one at one go. And exactly the, he takes the seven rings, says abracadabra and the rings join into a chain. The moment he does that, everybody in the audience are surprised. How did he do that? How did he do that? How did he manage to do that? But then the quick man is very quick to retort and he says, Oh, that's not a trick. I'm sure he has a set of joint rings up his sleeve. Now, the conjurer is really worried because his reputation starts sinking. And the audience are believing what the quick man says. And then he says, turns to the audience and says, My dear sir, will you please give me your hat? One gentleman from the audience gives him the hat. And he says, Now I am going to extract 17 eggs from this hat. And he starts extracting the eggs. Everybody is amazed. How can he extract eggs from an empty hat? They are surprised. And they are in wonder. What a great magician. He is performing such great tricks. But the quick man says, Don't worry. He has a hen up his sleeve. Now the magician is really angry. He is really, really irritated. He keeps performing the tricks. He thinks, okay, I should not bother about the quick man. He keeps performing his tricks. But every trick that he performs is undermined by the quick man. The quick man says he has a loaf of bread up his sleeve. The quick man says he has a cradle up his sleeve. He has a guinea pig up his sleeve. Any trick that was performed was undermined. I am sure all of you must have faced a similar situation. Your teacher must have asked you to write an assignment. You must have sat through the entire night going through the net, referring books and finally coming up with an excellent essay. And the next day you come to the school or college and your teacher reads through your essay and says, wonderful, what a great work you have done. And a friend of yours says, Madam, he just copied it from the internet. How would you feel then? Tell me. That is exactly what the conjurer must be feeling because the quick man was continuously undermining and underplaying all the tricks that he was doing. As I was telling, the quick man was making fun of the conjurer and the magician. He kept telling the audience that all the tricks that the magician was performing on the stage were up his sleeve. Now, we all know that the conjurer has some tricks up his sleeves. But then if somebody keeps underplaying or undermining his efforts, obviously the conjurer would get angry. And that is exactly what happened. The conjurer was getting very, very, very angry. And then he decides that I must do something. I must take revenge. 
So let us see how the conjurer takes revenge. The conjurer gets very angry. He turns to the audience and says, now I am going to perform the famous Japanese trick from Tipperary. And then he turns to the quick man and says, sir, may I have your golden watch? The quick man immediately takes his golden watch and gives it to the conjurer. The conjurer takes it and says, now do I have your permission to put this into the mortar and break it and smash it into pieces? The quick man says, fine. He takes the watch, puts it in the mortar, takes a sledgehammer and pounds it into pieces. The quick man thinks that the conjurer has actually hidden his watch up his sleeve. He thinks it's a trick. The next, he turns back to the quick man and says, now can you please give me your silk handkerchief? The quick man says, fine, take my silk handkerchief. With your permission, can I put holes into this handkerchief? The quick man says, fine. And he starts burning holes into the handkerchief. The quick man is a little puzzled now because he sees his handkerchief getting holes. He doesn't really see through the stick. Then he says, turns to the quick man and says, can I please have your hat? The quick man says, sure, please take my hat. Do you mind, sir, if I jump on it? The quick man says, no problem. So the conjurer puts the hat on the ground and starts dancing on it. And he destroys the hat. Now the quick man is really puzzled. He is unable to see through the trick. He is not understanding what exactly is the magician doing? What exactly is this conjurer doing? And then he says, sir, can you please give me your spectacles? I want to break them too. The quick man immediately removes his spectacles and he gives it. He takes the spectacles and pounds them to pieces. The quick man is really, really puzzled and he's wondering. He's unable to understand the trick at all. The audience are also quite surprised. What exactly is hop happening? Because the conjurer is not really hiding anything up his sleeve. He's really breaking things up. And then he says, he turns, the magician turns to the audience and says, now my dear audience, you have all seen that with the permission of this quick man, I have destroyed his spectacles. I have burnt his collar, I have punched holes into his handkerchief, I have smashed his golden watch and if he gives me permission, I am going to paint his coat with green stripes and I am going to tie his suspenders in the knot. If not, I am telling you that the performance has come to an end. And then everybody realizes that it was not a trick at all that the magician had really destroyed all the things of the quick man. The quick man is surprised and he also understands that after all there are certain tricks that cannot be hidden up the magician's sleeve. There is a thunderous applause and the lights come on and people start clapping and people as they go out of the hall they say after all there are certain tricks that are not done up the magician's sleeve. Well, I hope you all understood the humor that was hidden behind this lesson. How humorously the conjurer started destroying all the things of the quick man. And the quick man was not unable to see through the tricks of the conjurer. Those who read this lesson would understand that there is a hidden humor in it. And that is what Stephen Leacock is famous for, for his humorous stories. What have you learned from this lesson? The first thing that we have learned from this lesson is we should never belittle others. We should never undervalue others. We should always realize that every human being is unique and has unique capabilities and abilities. The quick man did not respect the conjurer at all. He kept on belittling him. Any magic that the conjurer was performing, he started belittling it. He started downgrading it. He started telling that all the tricks that the conjurer was performing were up his sleeve. Now, that is not the right thing for any one of us to do. Everybody who is big or small, in a great position or in a very low position in life, has unique capabilities. One must realize that they should be respected for what they are. And that is exactly what the quick man was not doing. He was not understanding that the conjurer had his own place in the society. He was performing his tricks to impress the audience. Instead of helping and appreciating what the conjurer was doing, he was trying to belittle it be little whatever he was doing. So the conjurer got very angry and he destroyed all the things of the quick man. Have you heard of the story, the hare and the tortoise? Yes. Now in that, the hare is very confident. 
it tells the tortoise let us go and run a race the tortoise agrees agrees to it the hare tells the tortoise let us go and run a race the tortoise agrees to that and says why not the hare is overconfident he thinks he is really very good he starts running the race and after some time he thinks okay let me rest under this tree the tortoise will take its own time to come and he falls asleep he doesn't even realize that he has fallen asleep the tortoise slowly and steadily moves and finally wins the race when the hare gets up it's shocked and surprised to see that the tortoise has crossed the finish line now the in this particular story the hare was trying to belittle the tortoise he thought that the tortoise was good for nothing it could never run a race but then the tortoise won the race and showed to the hare that patience and to steadily move ahead in your goal you would always achieve whatever you want to achieve or set out to achieve i'll tell you another story that has been written by stephen leacock i'm sure you must have read this lesson when you were a little younger especially in school the name of the lesson is with the photographer Do you remember the story? Well, it is about this man who is not really very good to look at. He comes to the photographer one day and says, "I want my photograph taken." The photographer is quite upset to see a man who is not good looking. But then, since he has to earn some money, he says, "Okay, fine, I'm going to take a photograph of yours." And then, after the photograph is taken, this man asks, "When can I come back? When can I come and collect my photograph?" The photographer tells him, "Oh, you come back after a week." After a week when he comes he's surprised to see his photograph when he looks at the photograph he's very unhappy he says that this is not my photograph the photographer tells i have improved on your looks see how beautiful you look on the photograph i have improved on your hairline i have improved your eyebrows look at your nose and your mouth people will appreciate you more in the photograph but the customer is very unhappy he gets very angry he says i am happy with all the features that god has given me God has created me this way and happy and I'm happy to be what I am today. I wanted this photograph because my friends like me the way I look. I wanted this photograph because everybody around me likes me the way I look. I wanted this photograph so that my friends would think of me and remember me when I die and realize what a great friend they had. So, what was the photographer trying to do? He was again trying to be little the customer. He was trying to tell him that he was not good looking at all and that by touching up his photograph he wanted to make him look more beautiful but that is not what the customer wanted the customer knew that he was not good looking but he also knew that he was a good human being and his friends loved him for what he was and he wanted that particular photograph so that his friends remembered him after his death by looking at his photograph what does this lesson teach us the lesson teaches us just that we should learn to respect we should learn to honor we should learn to appreciate all the qualities of the other person every human being is unique we should learn to appreciate that uniqueness and if we don't do that then we have to face the consequences just like the quick man faced all his things were destroyed by the conjurer i hope you enjoyed listening to this lesson as much as i enjoyed teaching you thank you very much